How's it going guys? Grimsy42 here and today I am going to show you the 5 rarest items in my gaming collection. Let's check it out. Alright guys, the first item I'm going to show you, and before I do, I will say that this is subjective to opinion. It's really difficult to gauge an exact rarity on stuff. Uh, demand does have a lot to do with it, even though there may be 10,000 of one item or 10,000 of another. How many people are seeking after it You know, has a lot to do with scarcity, which I like to, to bundle in with rarity. At the end of the day, it's again a subjective term, and in my opinion, these are the five rarest items in my collection. Starting this one off is a unlicensed Nintendo game, and it's kind of a bit of a, uh, a risque thing, if you will. It is one of the three Panasian games, and it's Hot Slots. Released towards the end of the Nintendo's life in 1991 by a Taiwanese company called Panasian, Hot Slots was part of a series of three games which featured Hot Slots, Bubble Bath Babes, and Peekaboo Poker, which were games that were exclusively sold at adult stores and featured uh, images of nude 8-bit women. Uh, in this game specifically, you would play slots and your reward would be that you would get to see the sprites of the women. Unfortunately, it's a uh, not a good game at all. And again, only sold in adult stores, so very, very few of these got out. So it's definitely cool to have this in the collection. The next item is something that a lot of people who've seen my collection consider one of the best items in my collection, and some have actually said it's the coolest item in my collection. Something I'm really happy to have, and I actually got really lucky. I picked this up before the price on them went crazy. I've actually seen some of these go as high as $1,000, and it is a world-class Nintendo test cart, and this is for the control deck, so this is the, uh, the one that will actually test the console. Giving you guys a closer look here of the Nintendo test cartridge, this is actually the model used to test the control deck, and there was a series of them that would test other things, for example, the power pad. And there were also a few that were actual games. There's a Duck Hunt version available out there, and on top of that, the hardest to find of all is a Legend of Zelda yellow test cart, and that's something that, considered by many the holy grail among Zelda collectors, but this specifically was uh, distributed to the authorized repair centers, and they basically would use it to troubleshoot to see what was wrong with a Nintendo that needed repair. And this would test things as far as the color displays and how the control was functioning as well as test the board and the ROM chips. So really cool item and something you definitely don't see every day. Coming up next guys is an item that is actually just about a year old and that's hard to believe considering that it's a rare item because normally games that are new are not really rare. However, this was a very, very unique exception and basically how it worked is in other countries, uh, Japan, the PAL regions, this item was available if you just took a time to pre-order it. Unfortunately, however, in the United States and North America, there was only one store in the entire world that this item was available. I did hear that a few were released later but in the Nintendo store in Washington, but this item at the time of sale was exclusive to the Nintendo World store in New York City, and it is the Mario Kart 8 Limited Edition. The Mario Kart 8 Limited Edition was uh, told to be sold in numbers of less than 500. This is something that's very hard to find, and it, again, it was exclusive to the Nintendo World Store in New York City, and basically the only thing that really separated this from a regular edition of Mario was the inclusion of a blue, cell, blue shell statue, which you can see here in this picture. Uh, what makes this truly valuable is not the item that's inside, because you could find this in other countries, but it's the fact that it is a NTSC version, which you can see by the ESR be rating on there and basically this was only available at that one store on one day and it sold out really fast and a lot of people have speculated that there was also about a hundred of these made available at the Nintendo employee store in Washington after that uh, but even still that puts the total of these made to just around 500 if I'm not mistaken so definitely for a modern game something that's extremely rare and something you don't see every day. The next item coming in at number two is something right along the same lines of the Mario Kart that I just showed you guys. However, this one was a little bit more obscure than that. I personally waited in line for about 12 hours to be able to pick one of these up, and it is definitely something you do not see every day. It is, again, a exclusive to the Nintendo World Store in New York City, and this one is the Hyrule Warriors Limited Edition. <clears throat> 
a little closer look at the Hyrule Warriors Limited Edition. And basically a very similar story to the Mario Kart 8 Limited Edition. Basically this game, as far as with the ESRB rating, the NTSC version, was only released at the Nintendo World Store in New York City and you had to wait in line a very long time. I personally was in line over 12 hours to be able to get this. And what differentiates this from the regular version of the game is just the inclusion here of a scarf. Uh, something you can actually purchase online secondhand, but this is something where it's the bundle itself that's extremely rare, not the items that are inside. And again, this was only available for sale at that one store. Uh, there is also that rumor, similar to the Mario Kart, that there were some made available at the Nintendo Employee Store in Redmond, Washington. But again, that is just speculation. There's no real way to confirm that. But I can say for certain that there are less than 400 of these out there. So this is definitely one of the rarest current gen games and definitely the rarest current gen game in my collection. All right, guys, you made it to the end here. This is the number one item, the by far rarest item in my collection. I don't think that part will be disputed by many people once you see it. This is something that very few people know I have in my collection. I just recently picked it up at Retropalooza that just passed this year, and it is something that, to me, meant an ultimate goal. It was uh, the last licensed game I needed to complete my Nintendo set, and you're hearing it here first. I was finally able to complete my licensed Nintendo set, and the game that put me over the top is the one, of, one and only elusive Stadium Events. Released in 1987 by Bondi, Stadium Events is considered by many to be the holy grail for NES collectors and is definitely one of the rarest games out there. This game is basically so rare because when Nintendo heard about it, they uh, really liked the idea and the gimmick behind the power pad, which at that time was called the Family Fun Fitness Pad. And they purchased the rights from Bondi and they wanted to make it themselves. So this was actually re-released as World Class Track Meet, making Stadium Events the hardest to find licensed Nintendo game out there. This one is just one of the few that managed to get out the stores before they re recalled it and replaced the boards and replaced the labels with World Class Track Meet. Uh, Stadium Events is not the most fun game in the world. It's just something that collectors who are looking to have a complete Nintendo set seek out. And it's something that was something I saved up for a very long time, did a lot of uh, garage sales and stuff of that nature to finally be able to afford to have this beautiful gem in my collection. And I am happy to say that it is not only my rarest game, but the game I'm proudest to have in the collection. And there you have it, guys, the five rarest games in my collection. Again, that is just subjective to my opinion. Other people may agree or disagree. Some items in my collection may be rarer to other people. That's opinions. It's something that's really difficult to track. Obviously, Stadium Events being the crown jewel of my collection. I'm very grateful to the friends who were able to help me track one of these down. This took a lot of time and effort of saving my money uh, to get this into the collection. And for some, including myself, it represented the pinnacle and the icing on the cake, if you will, of completing a licensed Nintendo set, which is something that I'm very proud of been able to done. Uh, and I really want to send a huge thank you to John of Gamester81 for the opportunity to put this video out here. Definitely grateful for that. I also have a collection video if you guys are interested in checking out what I have. I have a huge collection, something I've worked on for many, many years, and I definitely think you guys should check it out if you're interested. And I'm definitely grateful as always. I appreciate you guys watching and sticking around till the end. Take care.